As all my fellow designers can attest, mock-ups are a super important part of your business. They're there to inform a client, to show them the potential of a particular design, and also as a great tool to showcase your work at the end of a project. So in a nutshell, a mock-up is a rendering of your design on a product. So the aim of a mock-up is not a fantasy story. It's there to inform your client accurately what your design is ultimately going to look like. Whether that's apparel design, an app, a business card, label design, packaging design, whatever the case may be. And it's used in both the beginning of a project to show the potential of a particular design or at the end to showcase your work when you're all proud of it and you want to showcase it in the best way possible. So saying all that, I've used mockups since I've started my freelance journey two years ago and they're a very, very powerful way to showcase my work in my portfolio. But though I've used it in my freelance business, I haven't really used it in my print on demand business because as you guys know, I have basically just relied on organic sales. I haven't done any kind of promotion up until November last year. So I had no need to up my mock-up game because I wasn't promoting my work. But that changed last year. I really wanted to make a push of some designs I was really proud of and that were selling really well last year and promote them even further on social media. So I needed some good mock-ups. Obviously, a lot of you use the staple Redbubble mock-ups that are available, and that's absolutely fine. But if you really want to push your, your work and show your design in the best way possible, it's time to get a little bit more creative with your mock-ups. And that was my intention last year in the run-up to Christmas. So if you follow me on Instagram, this is a post that I put up last year before Christmas, and I advertised it for about a week. And I made this mock-up of all my stickers for my new Redbubble shop. Stickers that I wanted to sell over Christmas. So my aim here was to have a professional look and feel, to showcase all of my designs in one place. And with Placeit, the tool that we're going to be looking at today, it was super, super easy to do. Now, you guys should know that I get contacted by companies a lot. Uh, for affiliate marketing and promoting their stuff and I turn down the majority because I don't feel if I'm not confident in the tool and I don't use it I don't feel confident in promoting it to you but when place had contacted me saying would you like to try that tool and maybe your audience will like it too I took a look and I was flabbergasted by what you were able to do in the tool and as a designer, I always want to do everything myself. And when it came to looking at promoting my work for Christmas, my print on demand work in particular, again, I found myself days and days trying to mock up my work in different ways in order to advertise and promote. Place it came along and it took a lot of the headache away. So today we're going to take a look at Place it and look at all the possibilities when it comes to making mock ups of your awesome t-shirt and home decor designs. So here are just some designs that I created in place at last year. Some mock-ups that I ended up putting on Pinterest. So I had my base t-shirts mock-up and then I used that mock-up that I generated to go on a Pinterest pin mock-up within the tool as well, which was super handy. So how did I create those mock-ups? Well, before we look at that, let's just take a quick overview of place it itself. Now I will admit that I haven't even scratched the surface on all the bits and pieces you can do. I mean, you can make anything from Twitch overlays to animated logos and all of that stuff. And I have unlimited access, so I have access to all of this stuff, but I have not even looked at it. There is so much here. So what I've focused on is obviously t-shirt mockups, home decor mockups, Pinterest pins. That's it. So that's what we'll go through. So if I go to mockups and go to apparel, we can see straight away, if I scroll down, there is a lot. 
there's a lot of templates we can use. So obviously I didn't have time to look at every single template, but when I first got access to the tool, I was just browsing. And what struck me was the amount of different models you get, male, female, different races, different ages. And it means that if your target audience is a certain type of person, you can show that through your model. And that's really, really cool. I tend to go for models like this guy, really laid back because that's the kind of feel and the kind of audience that I'm going for, as opposed to someone that's overly modelly. But that choice is completely up to you. And if you decide not to go with a model, you can go with loads of these different flat lay mockups as well. So let's take a look at one of these as an example. We'll go with we'll go with this one. And I can show you how easy it is to put this together. Now, the first thing you do is obviously insert your design. And one thing to take note of is the fact that you are limited to 750 by 1200 pixels. So it's always a good idea if you do plan to promote your work and make a mock-up to create a separate artboard with those dimensions. I'll show you very, very quickly. This is my Fox design and this is typical of what my documents actually look like. I have an artboard for my Instagram, one for print on demand, one for my dribble, and then obviously more recently I've added one for place it as well. And this just makes it easy for me to keep my design in the format of where I'm going to ultimately upload it to. So just make an extra artboard for your place it stuff, export that to the right dimensions and you're good to go. So let's upload our Fox. And remember guys, we're not trying to trick our potential buyers. We want to make sure that our mock-up is a true reflection, as close to true reflection of what it ultimately looks like on TeePublic or Redbubble or wherever you want to sell from. So make sure that the shirt model that you've gone for or the shirt flat lay design actually looks like the shirt that you're promoting on Redbubble because again, we're not trying to trick people. We're trying to make it look true to life. So again, when it comes to actually placing your image, refer back to your original design and make sure it looks like it looks if they were to buy it. So if your design is really, really small uh, on Redbubble on your shirt, you don't want to make it huge on your promotional imagery because that's not a true reflection of what it looks like. So take care with your size and positioning at this point and make sure it reflects your Redbubble or whatever print on demand platform that you're promoting for. So you can make your design bigger or smaller over here, position it as you want, and then press crop to place it. Obviously this design was not made for a white shirt because I have white elements in it. So all I have to do is go to shirt color and amend it. And again, if Redbubble or wherever you're selling from do not have yellow shirts, don't make your mock-up on a yellow shirt because again, someone might love yellow. Look at your image, go to your link, try and buy it. There's no yellow shirt. Don't do that. Make sure that the color that you have chosen as your background and your mock-up is a true reflection of the colors that you offer when you're selling your design. So I'm happy with black. I'm not happy with this background and some templates you can actually change your background color which is handy. So if your branding color is purple, you can match your design to that. And it's as simple as that. And a really cool little feature is the ability to save drafts. So if I want to do two promotional images, I want one to be a black shirt and the other to be say a dark gray. When I have my black shirt all set up, I can save it as a draft. It lets me know it's been saved. And then I can go ahead and change whatever element I want to change, the shirt color, the positioning of the design, whatever it is, I can save the draft again. And now I have two separate drafts of the same design. And those will save in your draft folder and you can go into them at any time and edit them. It makes life so easy. 
And another really cool thing, because there's so many templates and you're never going to get around to looking at all the different ones, once you've found one you like and you want to find similar templates to that, if you scroll down, it's going to show you similar templates to the one that you've used and it's just a case of clicking it open, adding your design and you're ready to go. So if I go to my drafts folder, this has basically saved every single design that I've saved as a draft. And it means that I can just go in. I've blurred some of these because they're related to the account that I don't share with you guys. So that's the reason why some of them are blurred. But it means at any point I can decide to go in and be like, I don't like this color shirt. Click open my draft, edit it, save it again if I want to, and I'm done. So now that we know how to make the simple mock-ups, let's have a look and see how I created my Pinterest pin. So here we have my Pinterest pin, which is built on my original mock-up that I created. So if we go back here, once you're happy with your design, all you have to do, download it and save it to your computer. Then if we go to designs, Pinterest pins, it's just a case of finding a template that you like. Now, some of these are not very editable. So you want to get as close to how you want it to appear as possible. Um, so I think I used this template for my pen. And I simply moved this box further down, changed the fonts, got rid of these frames and brought in my mock-up image. What you also need to remember is you're restricted by the size of your mock-up image. So if I did a mock-up that was square and I wanted to go for a rectangular pin, I'd either have to make the image bigger so there was no white space or it's not going to fit as well as it could. Same if I picked a square Pinterest pin template and my image was rectangular. So be mindful of the orientation and the size of your mock-up before you come in to do your Pinterest pins. So once you've found a template that you like, it's just a case of changing your, your fonts. You've got all your options for your fonts over here. You can reposition these if you want. I can change the color of this background. So I tried to make it match my Rogue Pixel branding, added my logo, and I'm ready to go same situation I can save my draft and if I find that I need to do any changes I can just open up my draft make those changes and download the new image super simple guys super simple and again if I scroll down on any editable template it's going to show me similar ones that I could use as well okay so let's take a look at how I put together my sticker mock-up that we saw earlier so if you know me, you know I'm a perfectionist, guys. I wanted to do a sticker mock-up where the stickers look like stickers. So if I show my background image here, we can see that all I did was brought in all of my designs that I wanted to promote. And I added this white background so it looks like a sticker. Arrange them uh, in relatively the same shape as the laptop because I knew I wanted to have my mock-up appear on the back of a laptop. And that was it. So obviously when it came to exporting, I just hid my background and exported that as a transparent PNG. And if we go back to place it and open up my drafts folder. So we're back in place it. And this is the template that I used to create that mockup. This is not the final version. I don't think I saved my final version, but it's close to it. And all it was was a case of importing the image I just created in Illustrator and mocking it up on this laptop. In this case, as you know, it was an Instagram post, so I had no need to make a Pinterest pin out of it. This image was ready to go from this point. And what's really, really cool, if we scroll down, it mocks up our design on other laptops as well. So if I preferred one of these as opposed to the one I just created, I can just click this open and download that one instead. Nice and easy. So there you have it. As I said, I've only scratched the surface. I haven't really used Placeit for anything other than apparel and home decor and sticker mockups for now. But there is so much. There is so much and they add new templates all the time. 
So I do encourage you, if you decide to try it out, try it out. You don't need a paid subscription to at least try the tool. I think if you try it without paying for it, there is a watermark over all your images, but it'll give you a good indication on whether this works for you. And remember, if your business is starting to grow, it's always a good idea, no matter what business it is, to invest the money that you make back into the business. So if you're starting to see regular sales, promote those designs more, get more eyes on them. That's something I learned last year and it's something I'll continue to do this year. So now that we've said all that, what about pricing? Let's have a look. So at the moment, you can get placed at the full unlimited access, which is mockups, designs, videos, logos for $14.95 per month. That's if you choose to pay monthly. If you decide to go with an annual payment, it's $89.69, which works out to $7.47 per month at a 50% saving. So it's up to you guys. And full transparency, you know this bit, if you use my link in the description to subscribe to place it, I will make a commission on that sale, just so you know. So like I said, I don't do these videos often guys, but when I come across a tool that I'm offered to try and see if my audience likes, and it's really good, I've got to share that with you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you are willing to take your business to the next level, you can't go wrong with a tool like this. Get professional mockups. Yes, it's fine using the Redbubble mockups. That's what everyone uses. And the problem is that's what everyone uses. They, there's the same four models. It all looks the same. You can't change the background. So while it's all well and good, if you truly want to look professional and really build a brand around your shops, the next step is to make kick-ass mockups. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you to everybody who submitted designs in the design competition. I think I've had about 90 odd emails so far and with a huge variety of types of designs and it's been super fun having a look at those. But I wanna see more. So we've got four weeks till the end of Feb. Submit your designs. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, see my previous video. I want your designs, I want your art on my walls. I wanna try and support you as small independent artists. So that's it. I'll see you guys very, very soon. Next week, we're going to be doing 2020's income report for Prince on Demand. So hopefully you'll join me for that. And in the meantime, stay safe and I'll see you soon.